Hi, this is Gary Emerald with Tentmaker Ministries again. Um, this is another video that we're putting on the uh, Tentmaker 777 channel on YouTube. I'm sitting here with my friend, Reverend Minister Munster. He's a recent graduate of a theological seminary. He's looking to start doing his preaching and he will uh, debut on the YouTube uh, network of, uh, of videos sometime in the future. Um, he does not like my message, but I have been taught by my friend Jesus to overcome my enemies with love. So I invited Reverend Minister Monster into my home to uh, share and to discuss. And right now he's just too stupefied to talk. He's just shocked at some of the things I've putting, been putting on, on, on video here uh, this afternoon. I've done two or three videos and I'm going to put this one on too. And it'll be on YouTube. I got an email from a man who said this. Just look at this divine information. I have been wavering toward atheism for a while, but now I am officially atheist. Anything this vile should be totally wiped off the face of the planet. And he sent me a URL uh, for www.divinerevelations.info. And it was a video of uh, seven South American kids who claimed that they went to hell. And they recounted their story of what they saw and experienced in hell. And someone put it up on the internet. There are a number of websites like this and books that have been written of people who claim that they've been in hell and back. And, uh, and Jesus gave them instructions to warn the citizens, citizens of this planet um, of the wrath to come. And uh, this particular man watched that video by these uh, six or seven South American kids and said, this is disgusting, this is vile. Well, <laughs> is it vile? Have you watched some of these videos, like uh, 23 Minutes in, uh, in Hell by Bill Weiss, or uh, A Divine Revelation of Hell by Mary Baxter? There are several books and videos of, of people on the internet who claim that they've been to hell. Let me dispel these videos very quickly for you. If you took all the people who told their stories of the experience that they had when they went to hell, and you put them all together on one panel, and you allowed a number of people, let's say uh, some lawyers or just people like yourself or myself, to ask them some questions about their experiences, you would find that, that each of these people, their experiences contradict each other. For example, the average evangelical today is taught in seminary that hell is not a physical place. Hell is not a place of literal flames. And people there are not people who have um, physical bodies, and are experiencing physical, material pain. They're taught since, oh, the last 100, 150 years ago, since probably C.S. Lewis and his writings, that hell is a place of eternal separation from God. It's not a bodily thing. It's a, it's a spiritual thing. It's a soulish thing. And we don't have literal flames, and we don't have worms, and we don't have... Uh, uh, demons with pitchforks and those kind of things, that it's just a place of separation from God, which is terrible because God is, is the source of goodness. God is the source of love. So to be eternally estranged from God is a terrible place of, 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 of terrible consciousness. So the traditional teaching of hell today in th most theologi theological seminaries is that hell is not a physical place. It's a spiritual place. And yet, if you watch these videos from these kids and people like Bill Weiss, Bill Weiss 
Some of them say that hell is a literal place. It's literally in the center of the earth. That's where hell is. So if hell is going to be eternal, then this planet is going to have to be eternal. It can never come to an end or else hell would disappear, contradicting their, their, their concept and understanding of eternal damnation. So these people, by putting hell in the center of the earth, um, have in, in some ways kind of trapped themselves. But not only that, they're contradicting the theological seminaries who are saying that hell is a place of conscious separation from God. It's not a physical place with physical bodies being tortured in physical flames. Which is it? Is it the hell of these kids and the hell of Bill Weiss saying that it's real flames in the center of the earth? Or is it conscious separation from God? They can't both be right. But those theologians and those pastors who teach the eternal separation consciousness um, kind of teaching, you don't find them on the internet rebuking and, and, and uh, being against these teachings uh, that, that hell is a place with pitchforks and demons just having a good time torturing people. You don't see them on the internet um, strongly rebuking these hellfire and eternal damnation preachers that speak of a physical hell in a literal lake in the center of the earth. But both can't be true. So my dear friend out there who is turning people into atheism because they find the teachings of the traditional church full of hypocrisy and disgusting thoughts and ideas about God. Have you ever thought through your belief in hell? Have you ever studied it out yourself? Or are you just regurgitating what you've been taught every Sunday? It's important for you to be certain about hell. It's vitally important because you see, the traditional church has made the whole thing about God and the Bible an issue of hell. Because the traditional church, the teaching is that salvation, eternal life, is walking away from the path that you're on, which is a path to eternal damnation, and getting right with God in a certain way, in a certain measure, doing something, saying something, joining something to escape eternal damnation in a place called hell and receiving eternal life by saying something, believing something, doing something. This issue of hell is vitally, vitally important. What you yourself believe is important. What you teach your children about this is very important. This young man here, he's now officially an atheist. He's listened to the church. He's heard the stuff. These kids claiming that they went to hell and their pastors putting this stuff on the internet claiming that it's true, this kind of information is turning people away from what the Bible says is supposed to be good news to all men. Is your gospel, think about it, is your gospel, your good news, that which your church, your pastor, your Sunday school teachers are teaching, is it good news to all peoples, and does it bring joy to all peoples? If it doesn't, it's not the good news of Jesus Christ. Go study 
and show yourself approved.